interesting divergences between copper and oil uh, this morning since uh, since the London Open. Now, <clears throat> when you're doing the market story, this is only taking it from nine o'clock this morning. It's better to see where it was l last week to try and understand a little bit more about what's going on. So it's better to take it up into maybe a 15 minute chart to get a better feel for what real yields are doing based on yesterday's uh, Friday storyline. And we can see that this big ramp up in real yields, significant ramp up in real yields. And then we saw the copper oil reversal up here. You can see that uh, the oil price overtaking the copper divergence here after being at a low edge here, suddenly becoming a top edge here. So that change around becomes quite visible. And obviously, as it chases the market back round again, we can see that that is starting to set up something quite different. Now, a lot of people will probably start to recognize other elements to this. And, um, you know, the idea that this is one of the best real yields we've seen isn't, uh, isn't quite true. We've obviously been away over here at the beginning of uh, July. You can see that we had higher real yields back in July. And as we came into the end of June, we were quite significantly higher than where we were. So this is just a, a significant improvement, but it's not anything else. It's just a significant improvement. As we go into the concept of real yields, and we start really focusing in on the last uh, two days trading sessions, and this is what we should always be looking at is the last two days. Why? Because the day before still has all the big volumes. Today has uh, the up-to-date short-term information, right? So you should always look at the last two days. You should always look at the last two days sessions to get information about trades. As we look at this, we know that the real yield rising should be positive for the US dollar. So we start looking for dollar opportunities. And you can see that the dollar was right on the money. There was very little edges for the dollar to be in, in any trade here on a, on a long-term basis. So real yields in the dollar very strongly linked as one would imagine. The second thing that's strongly linked to real yields, of course, is bond prices, the curve. So when we look at the curve itself, we would expect to see if real yields are rising, we would expect to see that reflected very, very strongly, of course, in the US 2 tens curve. We can see the US 2 tens curve actually led real yields through this early stage coming in from Thursday of last week. And you can see that real yields are lagging the curve behind a little bit, offering you opportunities to trade oil against bonds uh, in terms of that lagging real yield that we've got, which, which when the curve is dropping, the real yield should be dropping technically, shouldn't it? Absolutely, because real yields are the difference between inflation and, inf inflation and yield. So when we're looking at that change, we would expect to see this starting to evolve. So you can see that oil is underpriced this morning, correct? Since uh, since this kind of high was put in at nine o'clock, oil has been underpriced. Well, guess what I've been doing since nine o'clock? I told everybody, I've tweeted it out. I've been buying oil since nine o'clock, haven't I? Yes. So everybody kind of understands the process. This is what we've been chatting about. Once we broke through the oil barrier at uh, 6550s, I started to close off my short positions and I started to think about where I was going to start picking up the long trade on oil, which we've done uh, probably about a dozen times so far this morning. So we can start to recognize this, uh, this uh, little storyline. Now, one of the things that we uh, chatted about and I asked the question, and as I said, I don't mind people getting questions wrong. I just mind when, I, when people don't attempt an answer because of fear of getting it wrong. Well, you're, if you're scared about getting a question wrong, guys, you'll never be a trader because you're going to get trades wrong all the time. You've just got to push on past those kind of things. But as a, as a, as a, as a trader, we know this 2 tens curve should be the same as what? Well, it should be the same as cyclicals against duration sensitive because if the two tens curve is rising cyclicals should be benefiting from that and if the two tens curve is falling interest rate sensitivity duration sensitive stock should be benefiting from the drop so we should always be able to recognize the opportunities to do a bit of business in here so when we look at the opportunities to do a bit of business we can ask the question well does that stack up 
And the answer is almost perfectly. Look. Cyclicals against duration sensitive stocks are almost an exact correlation to the twos, tens curve. Who would have thunk it, guys? Who would have thunk it except for the guys that did the same trade as I did this morning? You can see that that works. You can see how it works. You can see how it plays. You can see how the overall storyline develops. Now, this should all be sensitive to what? Or what should be sensitive to this? This should all be sensitive to gold. Gold does not perform well when the dollar strong and real yields are going up. Gold has a terrible time when that happens. So we look for the terrible time when that happens. We look for when gold is massively out of sync with the rest of the world. And we start looking for those opportunities. Well, when we see those opportunities, like on this last leg higher that we had on the interest rate curve and gold hardly moved and gold's been lagging behind the whole process, a lot of the times gold's been lagging behind on a micro macro scale basis. And we see that gold went down here into the, this was the um, known farm payrolls, of course. And then we see it happened again here. We can see that everything continued to improve. The dollar continued to improve. Everything continued to improve. And then gold made the last leg. Now, when gold made the last leg, everything hadn't improved any further. So there was going to be a buy reversal in gold. It was just a case of looking for it. And if you took the buy reversal, guys, my God, you've taken you know, eight, nine, eight, nine $9,000 on the way down and probably seven, $8,000 on the way back up again probably turned 15 grand on a one lot in the last uh, in the last uh, morning se overnight morning session it's been unbelievable since then of course uh it's about trying to find value isn't it from then on you can start getting back into your five minutes or your one minute charts to try and find some value and you can see that goals had lots of value to do business you can see there was lots of value in the uh, 11 o'clock session here to buy some gold there was value here to sell gold and now everything looks about fair value. Gold looks to be about fair value now, doesn't it, in the overall grand scheme of things? Does that mean there isn't an opportunity somewhere else? Of course it doesn't mean there's an opportunity somewhere else. We can obviously just look at those other opportunities. We can look at real yields and we can start seeing that oil prices perhaps are a little bit overbaked, a little bit high now. And we start thinking about oil prices, which is the brown line, and saying, wait a second, this isn't right. I want to get a little bit of short oil off that 65.90 and see if I can get a bit of a, a rip south. So I'm waiting for some offers. I'm waiting for some trade. I'm waiting for some liquidities to show up. And then I'm going to lean against those liquidities. And I'm going to smash a quick sell into the markets and see how it gets on. So this is how we start to develop our thought process around this uh, cheeky little trade, isn't it? You can see the other market that was probably a little bit cheap was the dollar initially. So you're obviously thinking to yourself that there's going to be some dollar buyers coming in just during this period here. That's a five minute chart, remember? So if you were looking at that storyline, you'd have been looking at the dollar with a, a an interesting glance. And you'd be thinking to yourself, well, if that dollar can pick up a bid, then obviously you know what's likely to happen to gold and to, uh, to oil prices. Oil's probably going to sell off and gold's probably going to come off a little bit as well. So that would have given you a few ideas, a few steps for a hint about that oil trade selling, because it was in line with what looked like an underpriced oil, uh, an underpriced dollar price as well. Now that the dollar's starting to rally, of course, that's going to put some pressure on oil, and you'd expect to be able to make some money on the short side of oil as it comes off those high prints. And I have actually just taken a short oil trade off the high prints. I've done it once before. I got a little bit of profit. We went 65.90s to 65.80s. 10 ticks and we scratched out at plus one and I've taken another sell off the higher price again at 65.90s and I do have stops in it to break even in that trade at the moment. So um, all good? Any questions? All good? Everybody's happy? I like it. So as I said, oil is at break evens. No dangers on that uh, bit of business. And uh, if we have to go back in again, we will go back in again, won't we?
So here's the uh, oil short, and uh, you can see I sold this uh, this first phase of oil here in the in the, in the earlier run up. You can see that we had a nice block trade just there. We've seen a nice big uh, order book improvement on the short side. And then uh, we got a nice break off the 90s down to the 75s just here. Made some nice profits, came back up. I went back in again, as you can see from the second trade. We never got any uh, local, uh, liquidity building. We never got any traps. We never got any liens. But we did get a significant book improvement on the short side, pulling away the bids. I should be able to make some money, shouldn't I? should be able to make some money on that shouldn't it so that's what we did we just took a swing at it no danger stops are at break at break even worst case scenario is we'll scratch and if we scratch we'll probably go in back in at higher prices after we sweep the high print here and if we sweep the high print at 6590s it would be expected to be trading probably 66 uh on the short side of the book here wouldn't it that would be expected at this stage uh, if we get uh, if we get scratched on this, but I can't get scratched now on this because we've just done uh, we've just done ten ticks now on this trade, guys. We've got a clean uh, ten tick profit now on the books, and uh, this is how it's now looking. Just here, there it is. We've just seen it breaking south out of that area, and uh, another another clean thousand dollar profit, right? Another clean thousand dollar profit. Same trade, obviously. Uh, just uh, letting it bubble away nicely, <clears throat> letting it bubble away nicely, and uh, it's now up uh, 15 ticks, guys. It's now up 15 ticks into this uh, break south. So again, easy money, Paul. Easy money for anybody that trades oil. You saw what the real yields were doing. You saw what the copper prices were doing. You saw what the curve was doing. You saw what the rotational boys were doing, and you were obviously anticipating a dollar move. If you're anticipating a dollar move, you're going to be anticipating a gold move and an oil move. So we got in ahead of uh, we got ahead of, uh, in ahead of those anticipations, and we managed to make a rip. Nice trade.